is Martin Schmidt. I'm from Vienna, Austria, where I am a member of the Institute of Social Ecology of Alpen Adria University in uh, Vienna. I am the head of the Center for Environmental History in Vienna and um, I'm also a member of a research team of about six or seven researchers who work now for about two and a half years on different aspects of an environmental history of the Danube. And this is also the project I brought from Vienna to Munich to stay here as a Carson Fellow at the Rachel Carson Center for half a year. The interesting thing is, uh, like many other rivers in the world, the Danube has been substantially transformed from the 1800s onwards. This is not specific about the Danube, about in the 1820s, in many respects connected to steamboats, uh, the Danube is reshaped, reinvented to some extent, and a great transformation, you could say, um, of that river starts, a transformation which is still going on today, as we can also see in uh, the tributaries like the uh, River Isar here in Munich, that uh, this transformation is still going on. And one of the decisions I took in my project was, um, and contrary to most environmental history of, histories of rivers uh, which have been done so far, I decided to go far back more in time, to start that history 300 years before that major transformation starts. Because I'm convinced that we can only assess or understand the intensity and rapidity, velocity of the transformation which is going on still nowadays. We can understand the transformation only if we have this contrast, this distant mirror of uh, the early modern times, late medieval, early modern times, when things were quite different and people dealt with the river in a very different way than we deal with the river today. The Danube is um, one of the major European rivers and uh, probably the most European river, uh, 280 kilometers long, the second longest river in Europe, a huge river basin of more than 800,000 square kilometers. Currently about 8 million people live there, so a vast area. And surprisingly enough, uh, no environmental history of that river was done so far. And um, about uh, two and a half years ago, uh, in Vienna, at the Center for Environmental History, we said this should be changed. And we started several projects uh, dealing with the environmental history of that river. The fascinating thing for me, being an environmental historian about that river, is not only that it's so diverse, so many nations, cultures, ethnicities uh, deal with that river and have dealt with that river for millennia or centuries, but also because rivers are so dynamic features of landscapes. Rivers can change their shape within only one flood and humans had to deal with that dynamics and had to, to some extent, adopt to these environments and this is the fascinating thing for me about the Danube and about every river.